In today's video, we're going to learn how to take an image like this and create an output like this. In other words, we'll learn how to do image classification and object detection. We're going to do this in R using just two lines of code. Yes, you heard that right, just two lines of code. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe to my channel so that I can continue to make content like this. The two lines of code that we're going to be using come from the image.darknet package. So when I say two lines of code, really I kind of mean four, because if you don't have this package installed already, you will need to install it first. You can install it from GitHub by using the install.packages function and specifying the repository as you see here. Next, you'll need to load that package. Once you have it loaded, you're ready to start doing image classification and object detection. This step is optional, but you might also want to set your working directory. The results are going to be outputted to whatever folder your working directory is currently set to. Let's start with classification first. I'm gonna be using the image underscore darknet underscore model function from the image.darknet package. And I'm gonna assign the result to a variable called darknet underscore model. The first argument that this function takes is called type. This can be set to either classify or detect. So for right now, we'll set it to classify. The second argument that it takes is called model, and we're going to be using a pre-trained model from the image.darknet package. For the classification, we'll use a model that's called tiny.cfg. The next argument that we need to specify is weights. The weights for this model are stored in a file on your computer in the same location as where this package was installed. The weights that we're interested in for classification for this particular model is called tiny.weights. And the final argument that we need to specify is the labels. This is again going to be stored in a file on our computer in the same location as where the package was installed. And for this model, the labels are stored in imagenet.shortnames.list. So that's our first line of code. Our model is now ready to go. And for our second line of code, we're going to actually apply this model onto an image on our computer. To do that, we're going to use the image underscore darknet underscore classify function. The first argument that we specify is the file, and I'll be using an image that's called beagle.jpg. And for the second argument, we just need to pass the model that we created in step one. We can do that by specifying object equals darknet underscore model. I run that and I have my results. For the image on the right, it's predicting that the label is a beagle with a probability of approximately 0.53. The model's next four best guesses are also different breeds of dogs. So we have Blenheim Spaniel, Welsh Springer Spaniel, Walker Hound, and Brittany Spaniel. That's pretty impressive for just two lines of code. If we want to instead do object detection, we can use the same two lines of code and just make a couple of very small changes. I'll start by copying and pasting the lines of code from before. The model that we'll be using will be different than the model that we used for classification. And this time it's called tiny-yolo-boc.cfg. As a result, we're also going to need to update our weights and our labels. For the weights argument, I'm gonna change the tiny.weights to instead say tiny-yolo-boc.weights. And for the labels argument, I'm going to change the image.shortnames.list to instead say voc.names. And this time, since we're doing object detection instead of image classification, we will also need to change the type argument from saying classify to instead saying detect. And that's all of the changes that I need to make on the first line of code. For the second line of code, the only thing that I'll need to change is which function we're using. Before, we were using image underscore darknet underscore classify but this time we'll be using image underscore darknet underscore detect. And when I run those two lines of code, the results get outputted as a file called predictions.png, and that file gets placed in wherever I set my working directory to be. We've just done image classification and object detection on this image using just two lines of code. This was a fairly simple example. The image only had one object in it, but you can apply this same object detection code to images that are more complicated if you want to, and it'll identify each object in the photo. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please remember to subscribe to my channel so that I can continue to make content like this.